Hi there, Sandra here from the Schwoven's Nest. Welcome to my Holly Jolly Christmas series. My first project for you today is inspired by those beautiful little cloth reindeer that you can see out in the stores and on Pinterest. This is a piece of buffalo check fabric that I grabbed at Walmart and I've got it folded in half and this is the wrong side. So I'm going to take my marker and I'm just going to freehand the body shape of a reindeer. I'm going to go up for his little tail a little bit and then I'm going to also then just go around, not make anything fancy. It's basically a rounded rectangle with a head and a tail. When I was cutting it out, I left a good quarter of an inch of a seam allowance all along the edges. Although I'm not going to be sewing this, I'm going to just use hot glue, but I want to make sure that I have enough fabric to make a nice size reindeer so if I go along on the marker lines it's going to be quite small so I wanted to make sure he was fairly big in size. If you have a sewing machine you could easily just do a nice stitch all the way around leaving a little portion open so you can stuff it. I decided just to use some hot glue. At the back by his little tushy, we're going to leave that space open because that's going to give us the ability to turn it right side out and then stuff it. When you're turning things right side out and you've used hot glue as your seam, you need to be really careful that you don't accidentally pull it apart. Of course, it can be re-glued again, but you just want to take your time, be gentle with it and make sure that you don't open up too many of the seams. For the stuffing, I'm using a Walmart bed pillow that I picked up for $4. It's their cheapest ones, and they're fantastic to use for projects. What I'm going to do now is, again, very gently push the stuffing in in small pieces. And I'm also going to use a dowel to help me get it up to where his head is and in any of the little corners. He's all stuffed, and I'm just going to use some hot glue to close the seam. To add the antlers, all I'm going to do is take my scissors and snip a tiny little hole on either side of his head. Now I've decided to use these little branches that I cut off from a maple tree in my backyard because I just thought those little buds looked like perfect little antlers coming out. And I'm going to take some hot glue, push it into the hole, and then I will just add the antler in and secure it a little bit more with some extra hot glue. I'm using some sticks for his legs and I'm going to use the same concept. Cut a tiny little hole, push some hot glue into it and then wiggle the branch up and into the hole and it will stick right onto the hot glue. The last thing he needs is some ears. I'm taking a piece of this buffalo check ribbon that was a little bit of scrap and I'm cutting out somewhat of an oval shape and then at the bottom, I'm going to use some hot glue and pinch the two ends together. I think these turned out absolutely adorable Christmas arrangement in this bucket. And I'm just using an old bread knife that I have to cut a piece of floral foam in half. Then I'm just going to wedge it into the bucket and I don't even need to add any hot glue because it's in there pretty firm. I'm going to be adding some stems to this floral arrangement and some of the picks out there can be a little pricey. So I wanted to give you an option to show you how to make your own. I'm using these Dollar Tree wired stems. When you take them out of the package, they're pretty sad looking so what I do is I take my fingers and I just run it along the edge of each of the wire ties and that just fluffs up that greenery a little bit better now because these are wired it's really super easy to get them to stay together so I'm just twisting a few inches down at the bottom to make sure that they stay together the next one I'm going to fold in half and then just add it to the original stem. Again, because it's wire, I can twist it and make sure that it's going to stay in place. I used about five stems for this pick and now I'm going to hot glue some of the Dollar Tree pine cones onto the ends. 
When I do arrangements, I always like to start with the tallest piece first. So this piece of pine is going to be sort of the focal point or the point of uh, the arrangement. I'm now going to take this other pick and push it down in front and then I'm going to move it around so it gets intertwined with the other one. I love using boxwood in my Christmas arrangements because it is an evergreen and it stays around all year. This one has a little bit of a frosted look so it will add some really pretty color and texture to this arrangement. Once I have the front main pieces in place, I'll take some smaller pieces and start filling in. I've got to add something to the back and make it look nice and full all the way around. And I've also got to add little bits down towards the bucket to cover up where the floral foam is and make sure there aren't any gaps. I'm going to glue on some pine cones here and there, just enough till I like the way it looks. And sometimes I don't even make it look the same on both sides because when you're out in nature things aren't symmetrical they're a little wonky sometimes so that's how I usually make my arrangements now it's time to add some color this is the first year in a long time that I'm adding pops of red to my decor but I think it's a more traditional farmhouse look so I'm using these berries that I got at Dollarama. They were on a garland and I'm going to cut off the holly leaves themselves and just use the berries and put them in wherever I think it looks good. This last project is probably my favorite of the three, although I gotta say those reindeer were pretty darn cute. This is the bottom of a gift box and I've just torn apart the edges and I'm gonna cut off the excess. I'm going to make my own cone just by folding it and bending it until I get the desired shape. And then I'm just going to roll it and use hot glue to keep it in place. You could also use a styrofoam cone or a metal or plastic cone, whatever you happen to have on hand would work fine. I'm using hot glue on the seam to hold it all together. I'm cutting off the point because I'm going to want to glue a pine cone to the top so I'll need it flat. And then I'm also going to trim the bottom flat and make sure that it can stand totally straight. I'm going to be using these white pine cones to create a Christmas tree. These are a garland door hanger that I picked up at Dollarama. I have a couple of these. And I also needed to go grab some other pine cones and spray paint them white so I would have enough to go all the way to the top. Before I start gluing on the pine cones, I'm going to add some burlap to it. It's going to do two things. The first thing is it's going to camouflage that white poster board and the second thing is it's going to really help those pine cones to stick because hot glue sticks really well to burlap. Because it's a cone shape I'm going to have to do some trimming but that's okay you won't be able to see any of those seams. So here's my cone. I have it sitting on top of a little bottle of Mod Podge so those bottom pine cones won't be resting on the table. I'm going to put a generous amount of hot glue and then I'm going to start at the very bottom and go all the way around the bottom of the cone. If any of the large pine cones have that stem down at the bottom, you're going to want to trim that away. The bottom should be as flat as possible to make sure that it sticks properly. The second row will be glued opposite to the first row, so you have sort of a brick lay pattern. You don't want to put them in a line because then you'll have more of the burlap showing. Don't worry about the gaps that you see in the burlap in between the large pine cones. We're going to fix that in a minute. Our Dollar Tree doesn't usually have these little mini pine cones. So when I found them, I grabbed, I think, six bags of each. I was a little pine cone piggy. So I apologize to anybody who came shopping behind me at that store and wanted to get some because I think I bought them all out. Anyhow, 
I've got some frosted ones and I've got some plain ones. I'm going to use these tiny ones as my filler pieces and I'm going to start fitting them in between the cracks in between all of the large pine cones. So here's the top of my cone. I still have some filling to do, but I'm going to be adding this really large one at the very top. And that's why I had that cone cut straight across because I want this pine cone to sit nice and straight right on top of it. I'm going to continue using these little frosted pine cones to fill in all of the burlap. I really love how this is starting to take shape. To add a little bit more extra color and texture I'm taking some of the natural colored pine cones and filling them in different spots around the tree. Down at the bottom there are still some gaps in between the large white pine cones so I'm taking some of these medium sized natural pine cones. I believe I had these last year and they were part of a filler package so I'm just going to take some hot glue and glue those on. To keep this tree looking rustic, I'm using an old two by four and a couple of wood slices that have a screw put through them from the bottom to the top. And I'm cutting a piece of floral foam that I'm just going to stick right onto the screw. And then I will put the cone right on top of that. I'm going to make sure that it's wedged in there really nice and tight. I hope you enjoyed the video and you like what you saw. If you did, I'd love for you to stick around a while. Hit that subscribe button. Those two black arrows will show you exactly where to click. Thank you so much for watching straight to the end. I really appreciate your support. See you in the next one.